now at 6. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening and thank you for joining us for the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Bridget Bjorlund. And I'm Keith McGilvery, the only station live and local right here through 7 p.m. Hartford police saying a massive force driving the gun violence in the capital city has been removed from the streets. That's right. It comes after the arrest of more than a dozen people in the organized crime group known as Get Money Stop Us. The police chief saying today the community is now a safer place that these violent suspects are behind bars. 13 alleged gang members in custody for their role in a violent crime spree in Hartford and beyond. This, these are some uniquely violent individuals that were responsible for creating dangerous conditions in the city and that required a specific response from us. Part of the organized crime group Get Money Steppas, also known as GMS, that police say is behind a string of homicides, shootings, drug deals, stolen vehicles, and arson. And our community is a safer place today because of the 11 months of work by everyone here and, and by everyone that helped with this case. The Hartford Police Department and state's attorney's office teamed up for an 11 month investigation into the group's criminal conduct, building a case against more than a dozen of its identified members who are now charged with violating the Corrupt Organization and Racketeering Activity Act, among other crimes. The members of this group were a massive force driving the gun violence in our city. The weapons used in many of these acts were altered in a manner that enabled the firearms to operate as fully automatic weapons. At times, firing more than 100 rounds in a single shooting incident. So why did it take so long to remove these alleged repeat offenders from the streets? People don't often want to co uh, cooperate with us while people are still out, and it kind of creates an impasse. That's the advantage to a case like this. Now we're able to remove those individuals and that's why we're saying we're hopeful that we're going to be able to close some of our unsolved cases. And while this concludes part of their investigation, detectives say their mission of holding violent criminals accountable continues no matter how long it takes. If uh, you're going to commit an act like this and you think you got away with it because it's been six months or a year, we'll think again. Think again is the message from police tonight. Eight of the people charged are already in state or federal custody. The remaining five have been booked into jail, we're told. Some of their bonds are as high as $750,000. New information tonight on a sad story Eric and I had for you this morning about a fatal go-kart crash in Meriden. Police saying a six-year-old and four-year-old were in a go-kart at Cronenberger Park last night when they collided and went under a closed gate. The six-year-old was wearing a helmet but ultimately died from his injuries. The four-year-old not seriously injured. Police say family members stayed on the scene and were cooperating. And new for you, the city's mayor releasing a statement saying, quote, our community was shaken last night when we learned of the tragic death of a Meriden child. My thoughts and prayers are with his family at this difficult time. And new tonight at 6, the Office of Inspector General is investigating the death of a woman who was in custody of the Hartford Police Department. Police say that Linda Prelo was found unresponsive in her cell on Sunday. That's just two days after she was arrested on two outstanding warrants. The police department performed life-saving measures until an ambulance arrived and took her to the hospital, but she did not make it. Prelo was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The medical examiner has not yet determined her cause of death. The investigation continues tonight. An 88-year-old is in critical condition after being hit by a vehicle in New London. Police say it happened just after noon in the parking lot of the New London Shopping Center that's just off South Frontage Road. We're told the driver of the car stayed on the scene and is cooperating with investigators. Anyone with any information on the crash should call the New London Police Department. A Stanford judge has denied motions for an acquittal and a new trial in the case of Michelle Traconis, but there is one part of the motion he is willing to consider. As a reminder, Traconis was convicted on all charges against her that happened last yeah. month. This in connection to the death of mother of five, Jennifer Farber Dulos. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc breaks down the judge's decision from the Stanford Superior Court. John Schoenhorn representing Michelle Traconis. Audrey Felsen for Michelle Traconis. 
Michelle Traconis once again facing a Stanford judge. Um, I'll note that my client is still in handcuffs. I ask that her handcuffs be removed. This more than a month after she was found guilty by a jury of her peers on all six counts against her, connected to the death of Jennifer Farber Dulos. It was just pure speculation. Now her attorneys feel there's cause to get rid of that conviction and try the case again. The court is going to deny the motion for judgment of acquittal because the court determined that there was sufficient evidence to go to the jury on each one of the counts. The judge also denied a motion for a new trial, but he is considering vacating one of the two conspiracy charges because of something called double jeopardy. The defense has a colorable claim with respect to counts two and four. Counts two and four, both dealing with conspiracy to commit tampering with physical evidence. But the judge won't make a decision on that until Traconis is sentenced. The one for which there was absolutely no evidence is that there was a conspiracy to commit murder. These rulings coming after hours of arguments from defense attorney John Schoenhorn, who feels the state did not have enough evidence to convict Draconis on every charge against her. Prosecutors disagree. The standard isn't we have a different interpretation of the evidence. The standard is could any reasonable jury find the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Outside of court Wednesday, Traconis' sister and father speaking with reporters. It's simply unfair that my sister is paying for someone else's crimes and that, you know, being with the wrong guy made her a criminal. Her remorse only is to fall in love with the wrong man at the wrong time and the wrong place. Traconis remains in jail as her family says they can't afford to bail her out. For now, she's under protective custody, waiting for her sentencing. She's mostly by herself. She's let out of her immediate uh, area very seldom, except for legal calls and um, uh, for, for visits and whatnot. It's more than just a shock. Right now, Traconis faces a maximum of 50 years in prison, but if the judge vacates one of those counts, it could reduce the overall sentence. Now, that sentencing is set for May 31st. We are in Stamford. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Julia, thank you. Turning now to weather. The day started sunny, Keith, and the clouds rolled in. Yes, and fortunately to walk us through it all, a point of privilege here, newly Emmy-nominated <laughs> Ryan Breton along with our Rachel Frank as best meteorologist in New England. Multiple our entire time team well, nominee, right? Nominated, yes, our entire team nominated for our extreme weather special. Grateful, Ryan. Uh, for you. Lucky to have you on the team. Well, nice to have you here tonight. A good accomplishment for our whole team. And Keith, as people will see, he was at Cirque de Soleil earlier. So he's got all the talent in the room, that's for sure. Uh, we had some sun for a little while today, but the clouds have been coming in and thickening up. And they're especially thick from about Hartford points north. That's where we have more showers, especially just to our north and western Massachusetts. A lot of the state, though, has been dry for much of the day today. But you can see the deck of clouds that's been thickening up. Up over the last couple of hours tonight a few showers but much of the night will be dry and there may be some patches of fog that form especially near the shoreline tomorrow morning not that cool tonight upper 40s to low 50s for lows then tomorrow I think we'll have a lot of clouds with patches of fog early one round of showers that comes through late morning then a break for a little while before more showers develop leading to a heavy rain tomorrow night and the worst rain and the worst wind of this system comes in first thing Friday morning we'll show the hour by hour timeline talk about what it means for the weekend too that's all coming up back to you Thank you. Developing news out of Philadelphia now. Five people in custody after at least three people were shot at an event marking the end of Ramadan. Officials say four males, including a 15-year-old and one female, are now in custody. Police believe that the three people were shot as two groups started firing at each other. No one was killed. We will bring you much more information on air and online as soon as it comes into our newsroom. A happy Eid from our team to all of you at home who celebrate in our region a Muslim prayer service at the XL Center, drawing thousands of people. Event organizers saying there was a push for an increased police presence at the venue after State Representative Miriam Khan was attacked during a prayer service at the XL Center last year. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin was there this morning. Organizers tell me their goal today is to make sure that people stay safe as they mark the end of Ramadan, also known as the holiest month for the Islam community. 
Last summer, State Representative Miriam Kahn was attacked outside of the Excel Center by a man named Andre Desmond. The report showing he threw her to the ground, strangled her, and assaulted her. This all took place after a prayer service that Kahn attended with her family. Desmond has been in jail ever since. Now organizers say they have an increased police presence on site to prevent any sort of attacks or crime. We, uh, we worked closely with the city of Hartford and the uh, Hartford Police Department. They assured us of uh, because of the ongoing conflict in Gaza and a few other incidents, uh, they've assured us of their support and we're very grateful for them to come here in extra numbers um, to make sure that the place is safe um, for people to observe in peace and enjoy the day. They tell us the police presence is also there to keep people safe as tensions and opinions about the ongoing Israeli-Hamas war continue. Due to the war, organizers say instead of a celebration today, they will be mourning for the lives lost in Gaza instead. This year, again, like I said, it's more of an observance uh, than a celebration um, because there is not a single Muslim in the entire world that is not hurting um, because of the suffering that's being inflicted uh, in Gaza these days. Organizers say today is expected to be emotional already as it is. They just hope that everybody can worship, pray, and celebrate the day in peace. In Hartford, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Certainly our hope as well. All right, rallies happening across the state today, highlighting the need for child care programs coming up right here at 630. We're hearing from teachers, education officials, and advocates who are sending a big message tonight to lawmakers. The championship celebrations are far from over here in Connecticut. The UConn men's team now back in stores with the championship hardware in hand. Hundreds of Husky fans gathered on campus last night for a victory rally at Gamble Pavilion. You're looking at it right there. The team landed at Bradley International Airport just before 7 last night and then headed back to campus for a big welcome home. Now it's time to plan a victory parade. The parade is set for this Saturday at 11 a.m. in downtown Hartford. Here's a look of the route. The parade will start at the state capitol building. From there, it will head north on Trinity Street, go around the city, and then end at the intersection of Asylum and Trumbull Streets. The rally will begin right after the parade at the XL Center. And of course, we'll be there bringing it all to you. So count on Connecticut's news station for live team coverage of the Yukon Huskies Championship Parade. If you can't make it there in person, we hope you will join us Saturday morning at 11 right here on Fox 61. You can also watch live on fox61.com, fox61 plus and on our fox61 YouTube page. Lots of options, Keith. Yeah, what